What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to have two main topics. One being ghost crab and the problem with them, what they're about, and having a hair follicle on your uh, reel post and how it will really mess up your drag. I missed six to eight fish because I had a hair follicle wrapped on the post of my spinning reel. We're in Ocean City, Maryland on Chasing Tide Charters. We're fishing for Totog. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe if you enjoy the content. Oh, what the? Good bite. The oh, fuck, dog? <laughs> oh, got off. It's probably a sea bass. You'll see me pull my drag and it'll be tight. But the next time it happens, it's not tight. It'll be very loose. What is with that? Why is my. Yo, my drags? Dude, what's up with my fing. Something wrong there, huh? Look, there's something wrong with my reel. Yeah, my, my... There too. So, when the spool was high on the post, it wasn't in contact with the hair follicle. It was wrapped with grease on it. When it was down, then it would spin freely until I cranked the handle and moved it away from the hair follicle. Oh, thanks, I got it. So the majority of these crabs have just finished shedding and there's no juice inside, there's no meat. It's a very soft shell. As you can see, they're very pale in color on the bottom. They're usually a lot more dirty and darker on the bottom with the harder shell. And what's happening is the hooks are just going right through them. They're, they're like a thin cracker. And they're going to come off the hooks. Regardless of having two in there, they're coming right off the hooks, which makes for difficult fishing. But we do catch fish. What do you think? Norton Price came today. Did you bring any crabs? Norton's got the big fish of the day here. Now, he brought his own crab, and none of them were ghosted. My hooks come up, and they're buried into my sinker. So that's how easy these crabs, these ghost crabs, come off the hook. Do you need another? Yeah. I'll put some of the yeah. Double digits. Y'all fuck with me right now, dude. No, he's saying it's big. Yeah, it's got a good bend in the rod. I'm right up to your right shoulder. Laser. There it is, circling. Decent fish. Nice fish. Real nice fish. Nice DD. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice fish. At least 13. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Beautiful yeah, fish. Dude. Oh, yeah. Fat fish. Oh. Oh, yeah. This is good. Yeah. This is a good one. I switched over to my rig rod. I was using the jig rod, which had the hair follicle on the post. Now it's a non-issue. Maybe. It's fighting hard. It was fighting hard, hard in the beginning. I don't know, I haven't pulled up a fish since. The last fish I pulled up was actually the big one. I don't know. Foul, foul hook? No, it's not a DD. <laughs> You're just fighting on. It's a box fish. Hell yeah. Faster we get them, faster we It's like a five pounder. Six fish in the box. You need a good fight to get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. It's a good one. Think we net ready, bud? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, bro. It's a good fish. Going out sideways. My job a lot easier. It's a good fish. Felt so much bigger. Boxy, yes. boxy. Why do crabs get food, bro? Get their white coats. Okay. 
being that this is a smaller rod and it's got good bend to it, you saw how when I set the hook, I did three quick crank and reels, drop, crank and reel to get the fish off the bottom. That's what you have to do. Otherwise, I'll high stick and I've lost fish doing that. Keeper. Keeper male, nice one. That's the ones with lift and fold. Back my drag you off. Fish to eat and kill. Gotcha. Another issue with these ghost crab is that they are very delicate because they've just shedded and they die easily. So Arrington's hosing them down. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Good one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. I'm gonna get over there and get on get on film. Good spot over there. Good fish. Yeah. Probably take another run when it sees the boat. This fish will pull this cooler out and they'll pull that whole weight thing out and go throw it. Can I get you to lift your reel? Your right yeah, hand, James. Nice fish, though. Nice. Well, I heard something bust. About nine, probably. Male fish. Yeah, nice about nine. Nice fish. Yeah. Yeah. Good fish. There's no fish. Come on. Fish is I'm guessing that. I mean, I could probably lift them up. We're letting them go, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is a nice fish, probably eight nine pounds. Good part. Nice fish. Uh, he's more than that. Yes. He might go ten. That might go ten. No. Put him on the scale. Yeah. He's nine, maybe. Eight and a half. He's heavy. This one's got a harder shell. You can see that's an older shell. It's got the darker mud and dirt on the bottom. So what I like to do is I'll set the sickle hook through the back leg and out the front leg. And with the banana jig, see how it turns on the side? It'll lay on the floor just like that. A tog will pick it up. That hook is on the angled on the side. When the tog picks it up, it sticks it right in the cheekbone in between the jawline there. And that fish is not getting off. It basically sets like a circle hook. Uh, that's why I love dropping it down there just like this. Oh, you Dude's doing it again. Why is my f***ing drag doing that? There it is. And I missed a really good fish on a good bait. Good bait is a major factor. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Todd. Hi. That's our fish. You can hear how that thing was just crackling as soon as the hooks touched it, so I threw it off, you know. They're all, see how light those bellies are? Super light, just like paper thin. Belly hook. Belly hook. He's hooked weird, but it is a butthole hook. Right in the butthole. Good fish.